Hello there, and thanks for joining me today. I'm Corel Painter Master Elite Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the Graphic Impact Brush Pack for Particle Shop. So I already have Particle Shop open here in Photoshop. Here's the Brush Pack for Graphic Impact, and here are all the brushes that it comes with. Now, in case you're not familiar with Particle Shop, I'll show you a quick and easy way to launch it. You want to go to Window, and then look under Extensions, and then add the Particle Shop extension here. You can pop it up with this little icon here and you'll get the Particle Shop panel. And this will give you three shortcut options for working with Particle Shop. So we wanna choose this first option, which is Duplicate Active Layer. And the layer that I'm gonna be working on is this black and white background here. So I'm gonna click on Launch Particle Shop. That's gonna duplicate that black and white layer so that we can work on it. And I'm gonna select the first brush here, which is Color Float. I'm also gonna pull up my color picker and I'm gonna pin it so that it stays open. And the color I'm going to pick is a very saturated blue. And I'm going to do a test stroke here. Now you can use your mouse or you can use your Wacom pen. It's preferred that you use your Wacom pen because then you're going to have pressure sensitivity, which will mean that you can do a lot more with the strokes to make them more dynamic and versatile. I'm also going to use the keyboard shortcut of holding down Control and Alt and then dragging my pen to resize it because you'll get a different stroke depending on whether your brush is very large or whether it's very thin. You can see the thin brush, I get more of a wavy example here. Whereas with a big brush, it kind of moves around a lot on its own. The reason why it's moving around is because this is a particle brush and these little particles follow your brush or sometimes don't follow your brush so that you get a more chaotic, more random looking stroke. Now, if you want control over this rainbow effect, you can have more or less of it. Right now it's set at its maximum. But if we were to lower this about halfway in paint, you can see that it doesn't change quite as much. And basically what this color variability slider is doing is it's varying the hue. So right now we have it at blue, and while we're painting, it's only swinging a little bit towards purple and a little bit towards aqua. But if we increase this more, it's going to swing all around and get all of the colors in the rainbow here. If we set it very low, then we're just basically going to get blue with no variation at all. And you can also change the opacity of this brush if you want it to be more faint, or if you want it to be more thick or more opaque. I'm just gonna clear out these strokes by clicking up here. And let's take a look at the next brush, which is Crystallize. And crystallize is really interesting because when you tap with your pen, you get these little crystal shapes. And, and depending on the amount of pressure you use, how fast you tap and how long you hold down with your pen, you're gonna get different results. So this is a quick light tap. You get these little tiny crystals. If I do a very firm quick tap, I get these big crystal shapes. And if I kind of vary my pressure in different ways, I can get different crystal effects. So I can make something that looks like natural minerals or ice or something. And you can also control the count, which is the number of particles. So you can even make weird little blobs or you could make different polygonal shaped crystals. If you wanna reset any of these brushes to their default, you can click on the reset brush icon and that'll put it back to normal. I'm gonna pick a different color and we'll test it here on the other side too. You can see how it looks on a light background. You could even draw with this brush if you wanted to draw a brush stroke. The next brush we'll look at is cubes and that works in a very similar manner to crystallize where you wanna tap with this brush and depending on how long or how hard you tap, you're going to get different results. So. Quick taps gives you very small little cubes and long taps give you very full cubes that are much bigger. And depending on how fast you tap, you're gonna get more of a frame shape. The longer you hold down, you're gonna get a more filled in square and you get kind of a random result every time it seems like. Let's change our color to something different here. Now this brush is using the glow method meaning it's going to build up as if it were a light source. So you generally want to keep your color darker when you're choosing a color to paint with, because if you make it too light, it's just going to end up looking really white and washed out. Let's do some on the other side here, and you can see you could really use this to make different patterns or different textures. Let's move on down to Glimmer, which is the next brush. Let's do a little test stroke, and you can see that there's these little streaks that kind of fan out depending on how much you move your brush around. Do an example here on the light side and you can see there's these little particles that follow your brush. 
So if you do a very slow, very fluid stroke, you're gonna get something that's more like this line here. But if you start to be really quick and erratic, then it starts to spread out more. If you make your brush much bigger, you're going to get more movement with your particles. If you make your brush smaller, you might not get as much movement. You can reduce the count of this brush as well. If I reduce the count, I don't have quite as many particles when I paint. You can also do kind of a spiraling effect, which looks kind of cool if you build it up on itself. You can get kind of a portal effect or some different flower laser looking things. The next brush that we'll look at is graffiti. You can use it to get some quick graffiti effects. So I'm doing really quick gestures and just doing a few strokes at a time, like so. You can also just sketch and doodle with this brush. This is picking up some of your grain or your paper texture, so you can change that to different textures if you like. And you can change the amount of color variability if you want it to be more or less colorful. You can control that. Let's move on to the next brush, which is a grid warp. We'll do a little test here, and you can see this is a brush that moves around a lot on its own. Again, if your brush is really big, it's going to move around more than if your brush is small. You'll have a little more control over the small brush. If you use light pressure, you'll get kind of thin, wispy things. And if you press down hard, you'll get thicker, more chunky lines. It's a very chaotic brush. You can control the amount of color variability if you want it to be more colorful or less colorful. And you can increase and decrease the count. The count is basically just going to add way more detail and it's going to move around a lot more. So you probably want to keep the count pretty low for this brush. Otherwise it's going to get out of control. The next brush is Puff and for this brush I'm going to use this digital painting that I created here of this tree that's on fire. And we can add a little bit of smoke with this Puff brush. So I'm going to choose kind of a light gray color that's tinted a little bit blue because the background in this piece is blue. And I'm just going to paint with this brush. You can see that it kind of does its own thing and moves around quite a bit if you hold it still, but if you move it around quickly then you get longer, more controllable streaks. So let's put a little smoke coming out of this here, and then we can go to save, and let's choose save only brush strokes. That way we can composite our brush strokes on top, and we can add effects like filter, blur, Gaussian blur. If we blur this a little bit it'll look a little more realistic. We can also change the blend mode to something like screen, and we can reduce the layer opacity until we get something that blends in a little bit better and looks more realistic. I'm going to use another brush to add to this piece, so what I want to do, if I want to combine the smoke with the layer underneath, I'm going to choose this option for duplicate visible layers below and merge with active layer. So this would be the active layer and then the layers below would be the background. So I'm going to click on launch particle shop. You can see that automatically created some layers. And now we have our composite that we can paint on. I'm going to select the scorched brush. And I'm going to choose kind of a dark reddish brown like this. Make my brush kind of medium sized. And let's put in some little embers here that are on this tree. You can tap and you can get little strokes like this. I mean, I'm going to make my brush a little more orange like so. If I make it bigger, we can add some fire on this tree here. We can also play with our flow map here to get some different results. We can increase and decrease our flow map here, or we can change the flow map to an entirely different flow map if we want to control how the fire flows out of this brush. So I painted some fire on here. Let's go ahead and click on save. Let's save only the brush strokes. Let's do a couple of things to composite this. Let's change the blend mode to screen, or you could also experiment with other things like soft light, hard light. I think hard light looks pretty good. Let's go with that. Let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'll blur it just a little bit and reduce the opacity a little bit. And now we have kind of a cool flaming effect. Let's take a look at the next brush, which is scratches. So I'm going to select white for my color. Let's do a few test strokes here. You get this nice scratch board effect. So you can do really nice hatching. I'll go in one direction and then I'll go across it. This works really well for adding texture to things. You could make entire backgrounds. If you use light pressure, you'll do small thin scratches. If you use firm pressure, you'll do big scratches that are more spread out. 
You can increase your brush size to make the distance between the scratches bigger. Let's do some on the dark side here so you can see this. You could also use this for hair and probably for cracks and things too if you vary your pen pressure and wiggle your pen a little bit. And you can control the count if you want more or less scratches, but this is typically going to work best if you keep it at kind of a lower count. Let's move on to the next brush, which is Scribbler. I like Scribbler a lot because if you draw even a straight line with your pen, the line itself is going to wiggle around a lot and scribble. So you can see if I draw really fast, it doesn't have much time to scribble. If I draw really slow, it scribbles a lot. So generally speaking, you want to be drawing pretty fast with this brush. For example, I could draw a tree and see all this detail I can add really fast. I'll draw pretty quickly with these other strokes. Add a little bit of grass down here at the bottom. Add some shading. Add a lot of detail with very few brush strokes. I'm going to use kind of slower strokes here and I'll get more texture. And I could quickly go through and fill this in. Now we have a little bit of control over the chaos here. We can actually reduce the chaos and that way if we don't want it to scribble quite as much then it's not as jagged. Let's move on to the next brush which is Spyro. And Spyro is really interesting because if you tap with it you're going to get these little spirograph kind of patterns. If I make my brush bigger you can see those are more apparent. Depending on how quickly you tap or how long you tap you're going to get different results here. You have some control over the color variability, so if you don't want it to be as rainbow colored, you can control that. I'm going to put some over here on the light side as well so that you can see what these are doing. You get these nice flowery kind of shapes. It's a really fun decorative brush. Let's move on down to Tangled, which is the next brush. And Tangled is pretty cool because it gives you this tangled up fabric effect. If I make my brush bigger, I can get bigger fabric strands. If I make my brush smaller, I get smaller, thinner fabric strands. Very versatile brush. You could use this to add texture to things. The next brush we'll look at is Texture Warp. We'll give Texture Warp a try and you can see that we get this nice warpy pattern with a grid inside of it and we can change that grid to anything. We could have this kind of hexagon pattern if we want. We change it to this cellular pattern. We change it to this bumpy pattern here. I get different results whether I use a small brush or a very large brush. And then of course you can control the opacity of the brush if you want it to be a little more faint when you paint with it. The next brush we'll look at is called Unraveling. Let's give this one a test. You get this really interesting electric zigzag kind of effect here. And if you paint with it really fast, it's not going to really zigzag as much. If you paint really slowly, then it's really going to zigzag a lot. And so depending on how fast you go, you can get some variation. Now you can control the chaos, which means that you can control the amount of zigzagging that's going on. So I can lower that and it doesn't go as crazy. Or I can turn it all the way up and then it moves around a lot. And last but not least, let's take a look at Weathered. I'm going to pick kind of a dark grayish brown color like this. And let's give Weathered a try. Weathered is a really great brush for making textures on things. So if I wanted to make like an old map or an old weathered paper texture, or stains or burns or something, this brush works really well for that. You can see what it's doing here. I'm going to pick a lighter color and do that over here on the dark side as well. Now you have control over the flow of this texture here, so I could change this to another flow map and I could get an entirely different result if I want a different kind of texture, like a quilted pattern. Or I could have this mesh pattern here. You can also control the intensity of the flow if you want it to flow less. You can control the intensity of the direction of the flow. So you get some different results depending on whether or not you set that. texture to things. So that's a quick demonstration of what you can do with the graphic.